Hello everyone. Very good morning to all of you. Am I visible? Am I audible? Give me a minute to confirm if I'm clearly visible and audible. I will start the lecture ahead. If I'm clearly visible and audible, please give me a thumbs up in the chat box. Okay. Just a second. Give me a minute. Hello everyone. Am I clearly visible audible now? There is some technical issue, I guess. I guess it's working now, I guess. So I welcome you all for today's session. A very good morning to all of you. I am Dr. Priyanka Sachdev here. And today I'm here to continue my series on virology. We have started this series. We have started general virology. A few more topics in general virology are still remaining, which we are going to complete in the next 20 minutes. After that, I am going to start DNA viruses today. So, I will teach you virology in a unique way in which we will compare the various viruses in specific headings in tubulated way. So, the most simplest way someone can teach you virology is here only. So, let me start without wasting time. I hope now it is clearly visible audible. Give me a thumbs up Priyanka. Is it clearly visible audible? NKN, is it audible? Okay. So, let me start. So yesterday we have seen the general properties of the viruses, the classification of the viruses. There are six DNA viruses in our syllabus. There are 14 RNA viruses in our syllabus. We have seen their names, their classification, their structure, how many of them are enveloped, how many of them are non-enveloped from the DNA, from the RNA, which is the smallest, which is the largest from DNA and RNA, which is having segmented nucleic acid from DNA, from RNA. Uh, and which is having single stranded or double stranded nucleic acid from DNA and RNA. We have seen all these general properties. We have solved many MCQs based on that. We have seen the various types of symmetries, shapes, structure of the virus, the capsid, everything, right? Now, in the last lecture only, we have completed the replication of viruses. You already know, I guess, I'm not repeating. You already know the six steps of the replication of the virus. So, the six steps I will just enumerate because I have to continue from here. So, you know, this is a virus, virus always, and this is a host cell. So, virus always replicate inside the host cell. So, you can see this is a virus and this is a host cell. So, the first step is the attachment. You can see virus is attaching on the red color receptor of the host cell. After attaching, the virus is penetrating inside. The second step is penetration. After penetrating, the nucleic acid and the capsid of the virus separate from each other in the cytoplasm of the host. This is known as uncoating, uncoating of the virus. After uncoating, the fourth step is biosynthesis. So, virus is multiplying. The virus is multiplying. So, virus have only two things, nucleic acid and capsid. Both are multiplying. Nucleic acid also multiplying. Multiple copies are formed. And capsid is also multiplying. Multiple copies are formed. Right. And after that, the fifth step is assembly. So, can you see one nucleic acid with one capsid? They bind together and complete viral progeny is formed. That is also known as maturation. And the last step is the release. With the help of the budding, the, the host cell is the whole cell, cell is bursting and the virus is coming out. So, we have seen the details of these six steps, already seen the details of these six steps. We have seen this is the point of entry and this is the point of exit. This is the point of exit. That is the first step, attachment and penetration. Ke baad, the virus is visible at the time of the release. In between these two points, that is between penetration and release, virus is invisible. We cannot see virus. This phase is known as eclipse phase. We already know, we have studied yesterday, this is eclipse phase. Yes. So, that was a revision of the replication we have studied yesterday. Let me move to the next topic, how we cultivate virus. We have already done cultivation of virus, but I have to do the MCQs of that. Just a second. Give me a minute. So, we have seen the replication, how the virus replicate. We have seen one thing, that for replicating virus, for replicating a virus, we need a live cell. Virus cannot be replicated outside the host cell. So, if you want to do the cultivation of virus, if you have any specimen that contains virus and you want to grow virus, it cannot be done on non-cellular media. That is on agar plates. You have to provide living cell if you want to cultivate the virus. So, there are three methods we have already seen yesterday. Give me a thumbs up if you have, if you have attended this lecture. I am just revising you so that I can continue from here. We have done this, we have done this, but this was in between. So, we will continue from here, our lecture ahead. And we will do the MCQs and the next topic, right? So, if you want to cultivate a virus, this is your specimen. 
you have a suspicion that whether it has virus yes or no you can be right you can be wrong so you want to grow the virus now if you take a agar plate and try to grow one drop of this specimen on a agar plate you will not be successful because agar plate any agar plate any any it is blood agar nutrient agar they contain nutrition but they are acellular media so agar plates are acellular media they are inanimate media viruses require cell for replication they do not have the living cell the host cell so virus will not replicate but if bacteria is present in the specimen the bacteria will grow bacteria can grow outside the host cell viruses cannot grow if you want to grow the virus you have to provide the living cell so living cell can be provided by three methods number one you can inoculate inside the animal most commonly we use mice we have seen we take our specimen in a syringe and inject the specimen in the mice and see whether the mice is having death or disease if the mice is having death or disease we assume that death or disease is due to due to the virus present in the specimen and specimen contains virus and if the animal is healthy after injecting means the specimen do not have virus so this method are obsolete obsolete nowadays and we don't use them but yeah theoretically they are there so the first method is animal inoculation usually mice mice contain living cell living cells are present inside the animal so virus will grow inside the living animal the second is embryonated egg hens egg we already see that this is hens egg the the egg which we eat at our home right this is hens egg it contains embryo can you see this is the embryo this one is the embryo the chick it will form the chick chicken so this is the embryo inside the egg and there are four layers from outer to inner it is cam chorioamniotic membrane allantoic membrane amniotic cavity and yolk sac these are the four layers the four membranes the four cavities all contains living cell all these cavities contain living cell so what we can do we can take our specimen in a syringe you can see specimen 1 2 Three, four in the four syringes. See the tip of the syringe. We can inject in the first cavity, cam. The second cavity, amniotic cavity. The third cavity, allantoic cavity. The fourth cavity, yolk sac. We never inject the specimen in embryo. We inject the specimen in various cavity and allow them to grow for two to three days. After two to three days, if the specimen has virus, it will grow in the cavity. So after two to three days, we will hatch the egg. We will hatch the egg and look in that cavity. for the lesions the virus will produce lesions the lesions produced by the virus are known as pox we will count the pox one virus is equal to one pox we have seen that especially this is done in the first cavity that is cam these are the pox in the membrane this is the cam membrane chorioallantoic membrane give me a thumbs up give me a thumbs up we have, so various viruses grow in various cavity they have specification so these are the viruses these are the four cavities inside the egg and these are the name of the viruses you can see which virus is growing in which cavity you have to learn that you have to learn this table ki which cavity is suitable for which virus they all contain living cell so viruses grow inside them and we look we we, we allow them to grow for 2 to 3 days then we hatch the egg and look the membrane in that cavity we look for the pox so viruses produces pox in the egg that is known as pox assay right so we have done this also we have done this also the third is the tissue culture we were in middle of this so let me start my lecture now ye to purane lecture ka revision hua now let me start my lecture the third method is tissue culture here we were using a live animal that is mice to cultivate the virus to replicate the virus here we are using a egg hens egg to replicate the virus the four cavities of a hens egg here we will use the tissue from where we will get the tissue we will take a empty plate okay it is also of three types organ culture explant culture the most important is cell culture so organ culture we will take the organ of an animal any animal we will take the organ we will cut the organ in pieces these are the organ pieces and put them in growth media this is growth media so the cells inside the organ are live these cells are live they are not dead because they are present in growth media now put your virus here put your virus inside this organ if it is corona virus take the lung take the tissue as lung organ as lung pieces and you can grow corona virus on that right so specific viruses have specific uh, choice for the tissue for the organ you can take that particular organ the second instead of taking big big tissues you can mix them in a you can mince them and take the you know minced tissue it is the minced tissue so second type of culture is explant culture we we take minced tissue but these two are not important the most important is cell culture what do you mean by that cell culture now in cell culture you take a plate like agar plate and you cover the entire plate 
with mono layer of living cell these are living cells mono layer so it is mono layer layer of living cell living cell so the entire plate this plate is known as cell culture now put your virus on this now put your virus inside this so if you are putting a virus it will enter in this cell in this cell in this cell inside these cell the virus will multiply what is the last step of multiplication there were six steps now so the first step is attachment the virus will attach on the cell then penetrate then uncoating then biosynthesis then uh, then assembly maturation what is the last step the last step is release what happens in release the whole cell rupture the whole cell rupture and virus come out so the these cells will rupture on rupturing they will form a lesion it is known as plaque can you see these are the small small plaques i am forming the white color patches can you see the white color patches these are known as plaques what are these plaques these are formed due to cell rupture the last step the last step of replication of a virus the last step is release during release the host cell rupture so this host cell is rupturing because of rupture a white color plaque is formed so you have to count the number of plaque one virus will rupture one cell and it will produce one plaque so the number of plaques will give you the number of the virus in that specimen give me a thumbs up everyone give me a thumbs up yes absolutely right have you got it so these all are cell cultures now cell cultures are of three type depending which cell you are taking if you are taking normal cell normal living cell any normal living cell so after five cell divisions after five cell divisions it will die so all the cells will be dead automatically because no cell in this world is immortal now so there is aging after five cell divisions outside the body on a culture plate they all will die and this this, this cell culture is of no use so it can be only used up to five cell division you can grow the virus on them but up to five cell division right the second instead of using a normal cell you use a normal cell along with growth media you provide growth media growth factors to them you provide growth factors to the cell so instead of five the cell will divide for 50 divisions before dying so cell will divide for 50 times so you can use such plate for a longer period right uh, so, so the first culture is primary culture in which we are using normal cell without growth factor so only five times the cell will divide the second is a diploid in which along with normal cell we use growth factor also so cell will divide 50 times what is the third method continuous how we can use it continuously if we use cancer cell not normal cell cancer cell so we don't have to add growth factor we know a property of neoplastic cell cancer cell they are immortal they will divide continuously 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 they will never die they will never die so this is indefinite this is indefinite it is forever it is forever so best are to use the cancer cells and this is known as continuous cell line so these three are cell cultures what are the three types of cell culture you yourself tell what are the three types now primary cell culture diploid cell culture continuous cell culture in all of them we take a mono layer a mono layer of cells in a plate right so this is primary this is uh, diploid and this is continuous right so in primary the cell will divide for 5 to 10 times after that it will not divide right so this this is used for primary isolation of the viruses right so there are many examples i will tell you the examples together these are the examples of primary type right the secondary primary mechanic examples are rhesus monkey kidney cell you take monkey kidney cell human amniotic cells chick embryo fibroblastic cell so either monkey ke kidney cell ya fir human ke amniotic cell ya chick embryo ke fibroblastic cell you are taking so they will divide for five times ten times and they will die right this these are used for isolation of the virus the second are the diploid in which you use growth factors because of the growth factors the cell will divide for 50 times 50 times again these are also used for isolation of the virus and cultivation of virus for vaccine production so cell can divide up to 50 times then it will die so the examples are wi38 and hl8 what do you mean by that in wi38 we use human lung along with the growth factor not alone and hl8 we use rhesus monkey embryo cells rhesus is a monkey right so you can use human lung or rhesus monkey embryo cells so you have to learn the examples the examples are important these are the two examples of diploid and the third and the most important is continuous here cell will divide indefinitely because you are using a cancer cell these are basically used for vaccine production inside the virus so most important use is vaccine production so these cells are cancer cells and they will continuously divide 
so you have to put virus inside them just put the virus inside all of them so virus will grow 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 these cells will never die they will never die these are the examples you can see the examples so in hela hela and hep2 are the most important examples hela hep2 in hela we use human cervix cancer you have to learn the name of the cancer in hep2 we use human larynx cancer so human cervix cancer in hela human larynx cancer in hep2 right in kb you use human nasopharyngeal cancer human nasopharyngeal cancer right in in mcconkey we use human synovial cancer human synovial so learn the name of the uh, uh, your uh, the cell culture and which cancer lines you are using so these four are important i guess yeah one more vero vero you have to learn in vero we use monkey kidney cancer cells monkey kidney cancer cells not human ye char human ke cancer the this is monkey so these are important examples that you have to learn give me a thumbs up so important examples are in front of you the three type of cell cultures i guess i'm i'm clear in my concepts here yes? so primary cell culture the cell will divide for five times and die diploid cell culture you use growth factor so cell will divide for 50 times and die in continuous cell culture you use cancer cell so they will never die they are indefinite they are indefinite they will divide always so the examples are more important the examples are more important so hela hep2 kb mcconkey these are the examples of continuous in hela we use human cervix cancer in hep2 we use human larynx cancer in kb kb what was kb i just forgot in kb we use human nasopharyngeal cancer and in mcconkey we use human synovial cancer in vero we use monkey kidney cancer not human ye char monkey kya hai ye ye char human kya hai this is monkey give me a thumbs up you have to learn these are the two examples of diploid and these are the four examples of primary learn them learn them everyone give me a thumbs up everyone means everyone jitne audience utni thumbs up okay you got it yes or no yes or no so we will do some questions based on this the cell lines and move ahead to the next topic so see this is the question can you read the question tell me what is the correct answer in the chat box any one of you fox produced in the fox producing virus can be grown in what fox where where we can find the fox so can we find the fox in organ culture can we find the fox in cam chorioallantoic membrane of the egg this membrane is present in egg the first membrane in the egg there are four cavities now this is the outermost one can we find fox in cell culture and can we find fox in continuous cell culture where we can find the fox where we can find the fox so most of the students are saying answer is b dr priyanka and nkn okay what about others i want everyone to answer at max you will be wrong now but at least try at least try what is the correct answer here yes so the correct answer what about others please everyone reply so the correct answer here is b so in chorioallantoic membrane when you put the virus in the outermost membrane you allow the virus to grow for 2 to 3 days then after that you hatch the egg and take the membrane out in the membrane you can see the lesions and these lesions are known as pox so pox are produced in a egg the pox are produced in a egg and egg may be char membrane hai. out of the four cavities it is seen in cam that is chorioallantoic membrane so you all are right yes home sab dr priyanka satish kn and very very good so correct answer is b okay everyone i am changing this question a little bit i am changing this question a little bit you you tell me what is the answer now instead of pox i am saying plagues plagues kahan pe produce hote hain where we can produce the plagues plagues producing virus can be seen in so where you see plague what is a plague just now i have told you plague what is a plague now what you will see what you will see okay two two options can be correct plague may cell culture and continuous cell culture actually continuous cell culture is a type of cell culture only there are three type of cell culture na primary diploid and continuous we can see plagues in all of them right the only difference is their number of cell division in primary it is 5 in diploid it is 50 in continuous it is indefinite all three are cell cultures so in all of them the lesion produced are known as plagues yes so correct answer in that case will be c and d right so this is how we can beautifully change the question yes you all are right very good very good okay so this is the next question in front of you so suckling mice is used for isolation of which virus i have told you there are three methods for isolation of the virus one is animal inoculation in which we use mice so tell me the virus for which we usually use mice to isolate that virus 
I have told you yesterday this example. So which for which which of the following? Coxsackie virus, pox virus, herpes virus, or adenovirus? We use mice for which of the following virus to isolate the virus? Yes. So what is the correct answer? Yes, Dr. Priyanka, you are right. What about others? I want everyone to participate. What about others? What is the correct answer? Yes, yes. The correct answer here is Coxsaki. For Coxsaki virus, for on animal inoculation was earliest method of cultivation of virus. But nowadays it is replaced by cell culture. Cell culture maybe it is replaced by continuous cell culture, right? But but for certain viruses, animal inoculation is needed nowadays also. So Coxsaki is one of them for which we use mice. So nowadays also for isolation of Coxsaki virus, we use mice. Otherwise, this, these methods are obsoleted now. We don't use animal. We don't sacrifice animal nowadays. But for certain viruses, we do. Okay. The next question is in front of you. Okay. Human fibroblast cell line. Human fibroblast cell line, a type of cell culture, is used for cultivation of which virus? You have to learn the examples. It is used for cultivation of which virus? Adenovirus, poliovirus, HIV virus or measles. For which of the following virus we use human fibroblast cell line? First tell me human fibroblast cell line are primary or diploid or continuous? Which cell line is Is it primary or diploid or continuous? And the second question for which virus it is used? You have to learn the examples. Examples are more important. So Dr. Satish is saying A. What about others? It is primary. Dr. Priyanka is saying it is primary. So what is the virus Dr. Priyanka for which we use it? For which virus we use it? What is the correct answer? Anyone? What is the correct answer? No, the correct answer is not A. The correct answer is poliovirus. For poliovirus, we use we use uh, uh, human fibroblast cell lines. Human fibroblast cell lines are deployed cell lines. These are not primary. And these are used for all these viruses. Poliovirus is one of them. So, in the options, the so Coxsackie virus, CMB virus, herpes, eco, antero, polio and rhino. So, from all these virus, in the option, we have only polio. We have only polio. The other options are not there in this list. So you have to learn these. You have to learn these. The answer is polio, not adeno. The answer is polio, right? And it is deployed, not primary, right? Okay, the next question. Which of the following is a primary cell line that grows only for five cell divisions and the cell will die? After five cell divisions, the cell will die. Which of the following is an example? So I have told you the examples to learn the examples. Is it chick embryo fibroblast? Is it HALA cell? Is it Vero cell? Is it WI38? What is that? Which of the following is an example of primary cell line? Not deployed, not continuous. There are three cell lines. Primary, deployed and continuous. There are three cell lines. In primary, the cell grows for five cell divisions and die. In deployed, the cell grows for 50 cell division and die. In continuous, the cell are cancer cells, so they grow indefinitely. There are various examples of each of them. I have told you the examples. I want to ask you the examples of primary cell line. Which of the following? Yes, most of you are right. The correct answer here is, of course, A. What about others? Hela or Viro ke skin? Okay, uh, here pe to answer A hai. Chick embryo fibroblast. It is primary. I am changing the question. Instead of primary, I am asking you deployed. Now, what is your answer? Dr. Satish, what is your answer? Dr. Priyanka? Uh, S494, what is your answer? Home Saab, now what is your answer? Which of the following is an example of deployed? So, yeah, the primary cell line ka example you told correctly, this is the example. Okay, deployed ka example concern. Which of the following is an example of deployed? Yes, again you all are right, very good. Deployed ka example is D. So, it is WI38. And what about continuous? The other two, HALA and VERO are the examples of continuous. So, if I change the question and do it continuous, so your answer will become BC. So in this way, I can change the question. Ultimately, you have to learn the complete list. Where is the complete list? You can see this is the complete list. See, this is the complete list. Currently, your question was on this point. Chick embryo cell culture. So answer was primary. So WI38 and HL8 is deployed. And HALA, HEP2, VERO, these are the examples of continuous. Have you seen? Yes, Dr. Priyanka, you are right. Yes. So, in this way, many questions can be framed on the examples. You have to learn the examples, right? The next question. I have told you in the egg, there are four cavities in the egg. There are four cavities in the hen's egg. What are the four cavities? Cam, the first cavity, allantoic membrane, amniotic membrane, and yolk sac. So, these are the four cavities. So, I have told you various viruses grow in each of them. I have given you a list yesterday. So, yesterday I have told you a list that which virus grows in which cavity so i am asking that influenza virus can be grown on which cavity 
can influenza virus can be grown on cam the first cavity allantoic the second cavity or yolk sac the last cavity or all so these are your four options these are your four options so someone is saying all someone is saying b someone is saying d so where the influenza virus can be grown yesterday i have told you the list which virus can be grown in which cavity of the egg we can put viruses in all four cavities with the help of the syringe the tip of the syringe now also i have shown you the diagram so you have to learn so what is the correct answer correct answer is not all it is it is allantoic cavity so inoculation on the core uh, okay allantoic cavity may influenza virus is mainly there right so amniotic sac may be influenza virus hai, but primarily it is an allantoic cavity right and yolk sac may it is chlamydia and rickettsia and cam may it is the pox virus pox virus okay you want me to show you the complete list okay give me a minute let me show you the complete list of yesterday's lecture just a second okay so here is the list you can see i'm talking about this list so these are the four cavities you can see we can grow virus in each of them you can see the tip of the syringe we are putting the virus in each of the four cavities you can see i'm talking about this list so cam the first cavity is used for hsv for smallpox for monkeypox for cowpox for camelpox so basically for pox virus for pox viruses along with hsv and vaccinia right amniotic cavity is for influenza allantoic cavity is also for influenza and parainfluenza so basically i know influenza ke liye do answers two answers are correct but basically influenza ke liye we use more allantoic cavity as compared to amniotic cavity yolk sac is for chlamydia and rickettsia give me a thumbs up everyone give me a thumbs up that's why in our question the correct answer is allantoic cavity we will go for allantoic cavity so you have to learn this list maybe the next question comes on the pox right okay give me a minute to come on the same question again okay so here i am you can see this was the question now if i change the question instead of influenza virus i give you pox virus what is your answer now what is your answer now from abcd what is your answer now pox virus culture can be done on which cavity of the egg which cavity of the egg i am changing the question you tell me the correct answer now so what is the correct answer now everyone yes so yes you are right in this scenario your answer will a right that is chorea amniotic membrane if i am changing the question and doing rickettsia and chlamydia it is rickettsia and chlamydia chlamydia can be culture can be done on which cavity what is your answer now from abcd what is your answer now so your answer will become yolk sac now right so in this way we can change the question multiple times right so can we move ahead can we move ahead okay the next question in front of you very very easy i guess everyone will be right hep2 cells are type of what are hep2 cells hep2 cells are type of are they type of primary cell culture or they are type of diploid cell culture or they are type of continuous cell lines or they are type of explant culture so i have told you the examples very 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 specifically yes so s494 you are right dr priyanka you are right very good so what is the correct answer here of course so hep2 hep2 is an example of continuous the cancer cell line yes you everyone is right can any one of you tell me which cancer name the cancer cells kaun sa cancer hai name the cancer in hep2 we take kaun sa cancer lines is it human cancer or monkey cancer if it is human cancer which cancer i have told you specifically ki viro mein kaun sa yes dr priya that is larynx cancer it is the larynx cancer of human human larynx cancer it is known as hep2 it is known as hep2 so yes hela hep2 kb mcconkey and viro these are the important examples of continuous cell line you should know all examples right so coming to the next question okay so i am done the cell lines i am done with the cell lines now the next topic is the viral assay we can do two types of viral assay what do you mean by viral assay viral assay means counting of virus can you count virus how many virus are present in your specimen count them count them so it is a quantitative assay count so there are two types of counting what is the total number of virus in your specimen or what is the infectious virus in your specimen so there are two types of assay you can do two types of count if i am providing you a specimen in a test tube and asking you to count the virus in the specimen so to count means it is a quantitative assay you are telling me the quantity ma'am five virus are present 50 are present 500 are present so that is a quantitative assay right now there are two types number one you will tell me total viruses how many total viruses are present here or i am not interested in total i am interested how many infectious are present that will cause the infection 
So what is the total particle count and what is the infectious particle count? So tell me the methods, how we can do that, how we can do that. So, total viruses can be done with the help of electron microscopy. Number one, take an electron microscope, make a slide of this and take a, take one ml of this and make a slide of this. In the slide, you can see the total, how many uh, total parts. So, electron microscopy, may you can, in the light microscope, you can't see viruses because light microscopy resolution power is micro, micrometer and the size of the virus is nanometer. Micrometer is 10 to the power minus 6, but virus is 10 to the power minus 9. So, you cannot see a virus inside light microscope. But in electron microscope, the resolution power is nanometer. So, you can see a virus in electron microscope. So, just make a slide and take electron microscope and see how many viruses are present. Count them. So, that will give you the total count. That will give you the total count. So, number one method of the total count is electron microscopy. Number one. Number two method is hemagglutination. Hemagglutination. What do you mean by hemagglutination? I have told you yesterday that there are some viruses. This is the virus. This is the nucleic acid of the virus. On the, on the surface of some viruses, some projections are present. Papillary projections. Can you see? Spiky projections. These spiky projections are known as hemagglutinin. On some viruses, I have told you the mnemonic also in yesterday's lecture. Ripe mango. Kis kis mein ye hota hai? Hemagglutinin. So, you can do the diagnosis. What these will, will do? If you combine such virus with RBC. So, these RBCs are separate with each other. Can you see? These are separate. But when you give... When you combine your specimen containing virus with the RBC, the RBC will agglutinate. That's why it is known as heme agglutination. Heme means RBC. Agglutination means agglutination of the RBC. You can see this diagram. Everyone see. Everyone see this diagram. Okay. Can you see the virus here? Let me mark. Can you see a virus with, with spiky projections here? Yes. You can see viruses with spiky projections. That is heme agglutinin papillomer there. Can you see RBCs? Yes. You can see RBCs. They are separate from each other. They are separate. So, the virus from the specimen will come and bind with the receptors of the RBC and all RBC come together. So, it is known as heme agglutination test. So, basically what you are doing, I am giving you a specimen. I am asking you whether virus is present in this, yes or no. So, you will say, okay ma'am, I will do that. Just give me RBC. So, I am giving you RBCs in a test, test tube, right? So, what you will do, you will take a slide. On this slide, you will take one drop of your virus and one drop of RBC and you will mix them with a stirrer like blood grouping. So, immediately on mixing, if agglutination takes place, you will say, ma'am, yes, virus is present. If no agglutination takes, takes place in the RBC, you will say, ma'am, no virus is absent. Like blood grouping, you mix blood with the anti -serum. So, agglutination. So, it is a simple test for diagnosing the virus. So, it is. it will give you total count. It will give you total count. You can do it on a slide also. You can do it in multiple test tubes also. In slide, you will say, ma'am, either it is absent or present. But in test tube, you can tell me the exact titer. Based on the exact titer, you can tell me the quantity of the virus in the specimen. Give me a thumbs up. So, there are two assays for the total. Total viral count ke liye do cheeze hain. Either you do electron microscopy or you do heme agglutination test. Give me a thumbs up. Have you got what is heme agglutination test? Or should I tell you again? So, in test tube, how do you perform it? Okay, you got my point. Yes or no? So, this is a virus. This is a virus having papillomer, hemagglutinin papillomer on the surface. These are the viruses. So, you are combining them with RBCs. These are the RBCs. Right. These virus. So, what will happen? These viruses, let me draw a virus, will combine with the receptors present on RBC because of which multiple RBC will come together. They are combining with the receptors present on the surface of RBC. If you can notice, these are the receptors. So, they are forming a bond with the receptors present. So, the RBCs are coming together and this is known as agglutination test. You can see the agglutination like dot, dot, dot granularity on a slide or the test tubes. You got the principle. So, how it is quantitative test? How? So, take multiple test tubes. What basically you are doing? You take multiple test tubes. After taking multiple test tubes, see this diagram. You are taking. So, in the first, take the concentration of the virus, the specimen is 1 by 20, uska half kar do, 1 by 40, 1 by 80, 1 by 160, 1 by 320, 1 by 640 and you are doing half, 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 half. That is you are reducing your specimen. You are reducing the viral load. Now put equal amount of RBC in all of them. Equal amount of RBC in all of them. So obviously, common sense says that the first specimen, the first test tube contain maximum virus and you are doing half, 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 half. So the last test tube contains minimum virus. So, where you will get maximum hemagglutination? So, hemagglutination is maximum here. 
उससे थोड़ा कम हियर थोड़ा कम हियर थोड़ा कम हियर आफ्टर दिस वी आर नॉट फाइंडिंग एग्लूटिनेशन बिकॉज वायरस कंसंट्रेशन इज ऑलमोस्ट नल वेरी वेरी लेस वायरस ऑलमोस्ट नल कंसंट्रेशन सो द लास्ट टेस्ट ट्यूब इन विच वी फाउंड हीम एग्लूटिनेशन पॉजिटिव दैट इज नोन एज टाइटर सो इन दिस एग्जाम्पल द टाइटर इज वन बाय वन सिक्सटी दैट इज रेसिप्रोकोल ऑफ दिस सो आई विल से वन सिक्सटी इज द टाइटर the titer is 160 so you can tell me quantitatively how much virus can be present in the male specimen everyone give me a thumbs up so it is also a quantitative test so in this we come to know the total particles of the virus so in dono test se hame pata chala total virus kitne hain either you do electron microscopy you will come to know total viruses or you do heme agglutination test you will come to know total virus give me a thumbs up give me a thumbs up everyone give me a thumbs up let me teach you how we calculate only infectious virus not total I want to know only infectious virus. So there are two ways. So uh, you know, I have told you the cultivation of virus. For cultivating viruses, there are three methods. What are the three methods? Animal inoculation, that is mice. Okay, we don't use them. The second is egg. Egg. The four membranes in the egg. The most common can the outermost membrane. And the third is cell culture. The third is the cell culture. There are three types of cell culture: primary, diploid, continuous. Right. these are the three methods i am not talking about animal i am taking egg and cell culture right in egg and cell culture i will come to know only infectious virus how how take the egg okay just a second let me show you take a egg take a egg can you see a egg yes you all can see a egg here you all can see you can see the four syringes so i am putting the virus in the outermost layer that is can i am putting the virus in the outermost layer that is can corio anantoic membrane can you see so after that i am waiting for 2 3 days after that i am hatching the egg and taking this membrane out so this is the membrane this membrane can you see this is can so i allowed virus to grow on this for 3 days if virus is present in my specimen it will produce lesions on the membrane these lesions are known as pox p o c k POCK. So can I? It it is done by pox virus. So see the spelling. I will say pox virus produce pox, but the spelling is different. Pox virus produce pox. Can you see what I have written? I have written pox virus produce pox on can. Have you got it? So pox are the lesions produced on can by a virus. so count them count them number 1 number 2 number 3 number 4 the rule says that one virus produce one pox so how many pox are there that is the number of virus so it is a quantitative assay give me a thumbs up and it is done in the egg give me a thumbs up you can see the same membrane this is the membrane can you appreciate a membrane this is cam so we allowed virus to grow on cam for 2 3 days then we hatch the egg take the membrane out and count the pox on them 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 so there are 10 pox so there are 10 pox virus 10 pox virus virus produce 10 pox have you got it see the spelling of pox and pox this is pox virus and this is the lesion produced by pox virus give me a thumbs up everyone give me a thumbs up so that is a quantitative assay number 1 done in the egg the second instead of so this is known as pox assay it is done on the egg and it is done on the egg maybe cam that is corio allantoic membrane so each pox is produced by single virus one virus one pox this is a rule this is a rule give me a thumbs up the second take the cell culture line can you see this is your cell culture a mono layer a mono layer of the live cells any cell will work either primary diploid or continuous and grow your virus here so take a cell culture it is having a mono layer of the live cells living cells so usually we take continuous cell culture line primary diploid continuous right and we are putting the virus inside them we are putting the virus so the virus will enter inside the cells jitne virus honge utni cell one virus enter one cell so the virus will enter inside the cell replicate and cause lysis of the cell so the lysed cell will be visible in the form of a lesion the lesion here is known as plaque the lesion here is known as plaque so white white patches are seen that patches are known as plaque right so one virus produce one plaque one virus produce one plaque count the number of white patches so that is again a quantitative assay this is known as plaque assay it is see it is done on mono layer of the cultured living cell right and the focus of the infected cell is known as plaque right so each plaque means one virus one virus produce one plaque can you see in this in this diagram if you can appreciate you can count the number of the white white lesions these all white 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 lesions are plaques 
plaques. Count the number of plaques. That will give you the number of the virus. So can you count? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So whatever plaques are there, that is the number of the virus. Again, it is a quantitative assay, right? So the summary is that we are having two assays with us. The summary is that plague assay, pox assay. Plague assay is done on cell culture line. And pox assay is done in ag, the chorioallantoic membrane of the ag. So that is the summary. Here, the lesions produced by the virus are known as plague. They are white in color. Here, the lesion produced by the virus are known as pox. They are also whitish in color. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a thumbs up. The rule says one virus produce one plague. The rule also says that one virus produce one pox. One pox. Everyone give me a thumbs up. I cannot simplify than this. No one in this world can simplify more than this. You can see the plague assay. You can see the pox assay. So, this is the cell culture line and this is the egg. The chorioallantoic membrane of the egg. I guess many of you got it. Many of you. I am getting many thumbs up. Good. Good. I got it. Uh, you got it. So, I am happy. Everyone give me a thumbs up. Everyone. So, these are the two, two assays in which we are getting the number of infectious virus. Not all virus. Uh, because, you know, if the specimen contains many viruses, still only infectious one will enter inside the cell and produce the lesion. Non-infectious will not produce the lesion. So, it is giving us the number of the infectious virus, not the total virus. So, the summary is that we can do viral assay. Viral assay means counting of virus. So, what do you want? You want to count total virus or you want to count only infectious, infectious virus. What do you want to count? There are two, two methods for each of them. The total virus, the two methods are electron microscopy. Take electron microscope and see the total viruses. That is electron microscopy. Or you do hemagglutination test. I have told you the principle of hemagglutination also. These two things will tell you total count. But if you want to know only infectious virus, there are two assays. Pox assay, which is done on ag and ag kabi cam, right? For your allantoic membrane. And plague assay, which is done on cell culture. Give me a thumbs up. So that is the summary of viral assay. Can we do some MCQs on it? Everyone give me a thumbs up if you are ready for the MCQs. So this is the first question in front of you. Virus quantification is done by. I am asking quantity. Quantification. I am asking for quantification. Ag inoculation. He, he, uh, uh, hemosidroption. Plague assay. Or electron microscopy. I am asking for quantification for the infectious virus. Infectious virus assay. What do you say here? Virus quantification. Exact quantification kaise karoge? How you will quantify? Yes, Dr. Priya Chauhan. You are absolutely right. So, plague and pox. There are two options but pox is not given in the option so go with plague go with plague so plague assay is done for quantification of the virus so how we do the quantification dr priya how we do priyanka how we do one plague is equal to one virus so that is the exact way of quantifying a virus right give me a thumbs up everyone is right very good so correct answer here is here is c so there are two types of viral assay for quantitative analysis right so plague assay and pox assay both are there. If the option instead of plague is there, pox is the option, I will go with that also. So, pox assay is also one and the same thing. Because one pox is also equal to one virus. One plague, one pox, both equal to one virus. That is my point. Give me a thumbs up. Okay. The next topic, very, very important. The next topic is inclusion bodies. You can't imagine how many questions are there. You can expect one MCQ in your exam every year on inclusion bodies. What are inclusion bodies? Sabse pehle. We will do many MCQs. Don't fret. So, what are inclusion bodies? Hote kya I have told you the replication of the virus. Can you see the diagram? The yellow color is the host cell. And this is the virus. So, virus enters inside the host cell. First, it attaches on the host cell. Then, it penetrates inside the host cell. After penetrating, it is doing uncoating. The virus separates. The nucleic acid and capsid is separate. Then, it is multiplying, forming multiple copies. And then, it again assembles. The nucleic acid and capsid assemble. And then it is released. You know the six steps. Right. Now see this point. At this point virus is entering inside. And at this point it is exiting. This is the entry of virus. And this is the exit of the virus. In between virus. Can you see a virus inside the host cell? Can you see? I am asking you. Can you see a virus in between? Can you see? No. The answer is no. The virus become invisible. The virus become invisible inside the host cell. You can't see the virus using a light microscope. You can't see a virus using a light microscope. But you can see inclusion bodies in between. 
तो बेसिकली इंक्लूजन बॉडीज ये सारी स्टेप का इंटरमीडिएट है वॉट आर इंक्लूजन बॉडीज मे बी इट इज अनकोटिंग इट इज बायोसिंथिस इट इज मैच्यूरेशन ये सारी स्टेप्स आर सीन इन द फॉर्म ऑफ द डॉट 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 विच आर नोन एज इंक्लूजन बॉडीज फर्स्ट अंडरस्टैंड वॉट इज इंक्लूजन बॉडीज वॉट इज इंक्लूजन बॉडीज दीज आर द स्ट्रक्चर सीन इन साइड द होस्ट सेल इन साइड द होस्ट सेल inside the virus infected cell that is the host cell right now what is their shape they don't have any fixed shape what is their size they don't have any fixed size because they can be anything na they can be anything these are the steps in intermediate no fixed shape no fixed size no fixed color no fixed location they can be seen in the cytoplasm they can be seen in the nucleus of the host cell kahin bhi ho sakte hain so they have various size various shape various location various staining various color they don't have any fixed anything these are seen inside the virus infected cell under a light microscope not electron if you use electron microscope you can see them clearly you can see the replication but light microscope pe we can't see them we can see them small small dots actually these are the sites of virus multiplication inclusion bodies are nothing these are the viral multi virus is multiplying inside the host cell give me a thumbs up everyone give me a thumbs up you got it you got it so you can see uh they can be present inside the cytoplasm they can be present inside the nucleus they can be present inside both right so this this is the examples of cytoplasmic right can you see okay see this is a brain cell neuron this is a neuron this is the cell neuron this is the nucleus of the neuron this is the nucleoli of the neuron in the cytoplasm if you zoom it out and see the some pinkish eosinophilic bodies are there these are nigri bodies these are bodies these are inclusion bodies these are the nigri bodies which are seen in rabies virus so this cell is infected by rabies virus rabies virus entered inside the neuron and doing the multiplication we can't see the exact multiplication but we can see in the form of the uh, some small dot like structures which are known as nigri bodies which are the inclusion bodies give me a thumbs up okay so my link is expiring i have to stop here so unfortunately i have to stop here but i am joining back in the next 3 minutes after ending this lecture i will join back in the next 3 minutes immediately after and karke mai join karungi where again a free lecture not on youtube but on unacademy app so please i request all the students who are uh, watching me live please join me on unacademy app it is a free class like youtube only it is a continuation of this class only so this is virology episode 3 episode 4 is on the app so join virology episode 4 on unacademy learners app it is a free class you can see me live there just click on the link and use the code suchdev10 if code is asked sometimes it it may be asked so use the code suchdev10 to watch it So it is a free class. S A C H D E V. Such day ten is the code. So go on the learners app. You can see the link. Click on the link and use this code if it is asked. If you have not installed the app, please install it right now and select the category as NEET PG. Inside that category, you can see my lecture right now after ending this lecture. The link may be given in the description of this this YouTube lecture. Go in the description. You may find virology episode four link there. So you can click on the link in the description also. So thank you very much for watching this lecture. I request everyone to join me on special class. Also, we will continue the inclusion bodies and many DNA viruses there. So don't miss, don't um, dare to miss it. Don't forget to write your feedback in the comment box. If you like the lecture, click on the like button before leaving. Next class is after immediately after this class. I am joining on the app. Don't forget to follow my profile link on an academy. You will get the notification. Always use the code such day ten for watching. for unlocking the free lectures and for getting discount in the plus subscription right uh, okay few more announcements neat pg all india mock test an academy is conducting on 17th april 9 am i want all students to participate in this it is a free test you can use the same code suchdev10 to participate in this right an academy prof one is already out and you can take the subscription if you are interested if you are a first prof student On an academy, we have two type of paid subscription. In plus, you will get an academy. In iconic, along with an academy, you will get prep ladder also. Once you take the subscription, you will be eligible for all these batches by the topmost educators. These are the various plans with plus, various plans with iconic, various plans with light. In light, you get only test series. See the minimum plan, maximum plan. See the prices. Longer the plan, cheaper it is. Go with a longer plan; it will be more cost effective for you. Whatever plan you are selecting. apply code such dev10 before payment if you apply this code before payment you will get maximum discount that i can guarantee so if you want to get maximum discount please apply code such dev10 before payment s a c h d e v such dev10 thank you very much join me on the app right now